So this is the second uh, of the demonstrations for uh, the CAD Ender, of course, and we're going to use Wave 1 Gold. Uh, as we discussed in the CAD lectures, um, this is a reciprocating file. It rotates 150 degrees counterclockwise and then 30 degrees clockwise. has numerous advantages, which obviously you can review um, through the lecture. Uh, we're just going to demonstrate its use. It's very similar to Protaper Gold in terms of overall strategy. It's just a manipulation of file differs. So as per the Protaper Gold demonstration, first step is always to go in with a hand file, scout the canal, see what we've got, see where we can get to passively, um, undertake a little bit of watch winding just to open up the coronal portion like that. Once the size 10 is loose, move to the size 15. Again, just watch winding, making it loose, coronal portion. Now here I'm going to depart from the standard manufacturer's protocol um, because Wave 1 Gold is described as a uh, single file system. Um, but Wave 1 Gold, which is this file here, the primary file, is quite large. The tip is a size 25. So if you've got a tight or sclerosed canal, it's very difficult to get the file to engage um, straight away. So it is beneficial to use some sort of coronal shaping device or an orifice shaper um, before you go in with the Wave 1 file. So when I use Wave 1 personally, um, I always use it um, as a two file system. So I'll use the SX file from the Protaper Gold system to do my coronal flare and then I'll move and use the Wave 1 file after that. So if you remember how we used the SX file with the Protaper Gold, it's going in. Okay. There we go, that, was a, that wasn't a deliberate mistake, but uh, it's very important. Um, the movement of a, of a reciprocating file um, is completely different from a rotational file, so you have to make sure the motor uh, is set accordingly because otherwise you'll get this motion and this file is not designed to be used in that way. So I'm just resetting the motor now. Your demonstrators will show you how to do that if you're unsure. So I've set it back now to pro taper, rotational movement, so it's the same again. Rotating, pushing the file predominantly against the outer wall. A handy tip is if you think of the name of the canal that you are instrumenting, you brush it towards the same cusp. So in the mesiobuccal canal of an upper six, you're going to be brushing predominantly towards the mesiobuccal cusp. In the buccal canal of an upper five, you're going to be brushing towards the buccal cusp because that's where the vast majority of the dentine is and that means that you're brushing away from the fication and reducing the risk of strip perforation. So coronal flare is created with this exactly the same way. You can see there how much dentine debris this will bring out. Clean that up. Take the file out. Again we've stressed the importance of irrigation. Get rid of dentine debris. Patency filing. So having done our coronal flare we're now going to put the file in and at this point, clinically, this is when we would establish our working length using the apex locator. Again, these are presets, so we know what it is. So, apical glide path is created using the size 10. Size 15 to length. Just making sure that that size 15 is loose before we move on to the next one. Now, as I said before, reset the motor so that it's um, on to the reciprocating setting. Again, if you're unsure about that, the clinical demonstrators will show you how to do it. So you want it on reciprocating wave one all. And you'll notice a difference because it makes a clicking noise when you fire it up. So as opposed to just a gentle rotation, this is clicking backwards and forwards. So we know our length, which is 18 millimeters. Set our file to length. Now, unlike with the Pro Tip of Gold, where we're looking to see this two millimeters or so away from the um, 
working length. You're not going to get that here because this is a much bigger file. So what we're going to do is we're just going to insert the file into the canal, let it engage passively and then just gently brush out. You can feel it just slow down as it goes in, as it touches the file, as the file touches the canal, just let it engage and then push it out. It's described in the literature as a pecking motion, but it isn't. You're just putting it in passively, letting it engage, and as soon as you feel pressure and the file being grabbed in the canal, you're just brushing out again. It's important only to do three passes with the file because the flutes get loaded with debris and once that happens, they can't cut anymore. So three passes, irrigate, patency file, back in again. And you'll notice this time, having done a bit more preparation, it goes further down. We're still going to struggle to get to length here, but we'll get a little bit further down. So again, no engagement, passive engagement, there we go, and we're just bringing it out. As soon as you can feel it touch or slow down its rotation, bring it out. Three passes, irrigate, patency file, and then put back in again, and this time it should go almost completely to length, which it does. So now we're going to finish off, so take it fully to length, two, three passes, irrigate, patency file to remove debris, and that's it completed. So it's, as long as you apply it correctly, it's very safe, minimal risk of fracture. It's obviously important that you get good coronal flare first before going on and then using the file. If you try and do it straight away just as a single file system, it does present challenges because the coronal flare is difficult to achieve quickly.